and welcome to this episode of our Analyst Angle series. I'm your host, Shelly Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. And today, our conversation is going to be focused on the shift toward interconnected digital systems and hybrid cloud environments and the complexity of managing them and, and really the deeply connected data-driven ecosystem that is our reality today. And of course, the need for all organizations to, to have a let's get the data right first mindset as we move into these AI powered days ahead. My guest today, I'm so excited about, is Logic Monitor CEO Christina Kosmowski. And we're going to discuss the gap between IT teams and IT ops teams and thoughts on how to bridge that. And Christina, I'm so thrilled to have you. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and talk about my favorite, favorite topic. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? I do have to set the stage and say that Christina and I met, I don't know, a month, six weeks ago, something like that. Who knows? Uh, time flies so quickly these days. But we discovered that we are both Kansas City girls in some way or another. I didn't grow up here in Kansas City, but I live here. And I think you grew up in Kansas City, didn't you, Christina? I grew up. It's, yeah, my, yeah. My roots. Love, my family's still there. Um, it's fantastic. Obviously love the Chiefs. Yeah. Know right now so well and i'm pretty sure you grew up in about the same neighborhood that i uh, that i live in i'm in brookside and our kids i mean my daughters went to the same high school that you graduated from and so it's a small dog on world isn't it it is it is <laughs> All right. Well, one of the things I know I warned you about this, but one of the things I love to do is I love to start these conversations by just asking you to share, if you would, a little bit about your career backstory. So what's your journey been like? I love it. Well, I am going to go back to Kansas City because it was such an important part of, of my 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 roots and yeah. and even the the high school that I, I went to and my mom went there, my grandmother went there, that that your your daughters went to is an all girls school. And that really, I think for me, unlocked a, a lot of things. Um, one was just my love for for STEM. And, you know, often now, you know, women, um, thankfully, are, are more into it. But, you know, it wasn't as as um, big of a thing back, back sure. there. Uh, and, and also sports, like I was a huge sports person, loved soccer. And uh, it was great, you know, where I got to be, you know, this all girl school was, was, you know, we were the front and center of both sports and and STEM. And so I think that's carried through like my entire career. I sure my team is just always sick of it. I'm always using sports analogies, but <laughs> I love, love sports. It's been an important part for me, but I then went to college and I was like, all right, what do I, what do I want to be? What do I want to do when I grow up? And I think I may sometimes still, still, you know, I think we all, all are always evaluating that, but um, yeah, I didn't know. I was like, I know here's what I love to do. And I don't know how that translates. And so I was in college and I took um, a career test, like, you know, answer all the questions yeah. and I came back and it said that I should be a park ranger. So um, I am not a park ranger, but I will be someday. Someday I will. I will make that that happen. Um, but I was like, park ranger, like, where did that come from? Like, why, why, why would, um, 40 outdoors ranger. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I like outdoors, but I liked interacting with people, but I was so fascinated by science and, you know, nature yeah. and all that stuff. And so I think, you know, I figured out, well, how can I translate that to where I could maybe make some money? Cause you know, I yeah. get to pay back this, this college, uh, college thing. And, and it was really around bridging that gap between kind of the people, human business side with the technology and the science side. And so yeah. I ended up studying industrial engineering, um, which, you know, was very much about kind of the business side and the operation side mm -hmm. of, of engineering. And so that's been just the, the crux of my entire career as I think about you know, even companies that I I go to, um, how I lead, how I think about innovation, how I think about technology is like really putting um, the customer and the business at the at the center of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm so excited about too with Logic Monitor, you know, and observability is such a um, historically, you know, deeply technical, um, you know, centric uh, business, but the shifts we're seeing kind of in the market and the need to be able to democratize that and, and connect the dots to the business. And so um, it's it's definitely started started back, uh, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Um, 
what where, where my core is at. Isn't it funny how we end up, you know, the paths that we take? I I ended up when I was in college. I I thought I wanted to go to law school. My advisor tried to shoehorn me into a poli sci degree track, and I knew that that there was nothing that I was less interested in that. And so I resisted declaring a major. I ended up in a gen ed comms class. And I remember thinking in a very short period of time, these are my people being able to stand up in front of a room full of people and comport myself being, you know, understanding rhetoric and logic and all of that sort of thing. And, um, and being a great communicator. I mean, and really there's so many paths that you can take with a degree like that. So, you know, and one thing I will, I will say that I think is really, that is important. Oh gosh, I don't know. It's probably been five years ago. I was interviewing a woman who was a senior leader at, at a huge uh, company. And we were talking about education and she said to me, we, and we started talking about going to an all girls school and I did not do that. And, and so my daughters are, you know, a, a new experience for me. And she said to me though, that, um, she did a lot of speaking and that she had been keynoting at an event and she walked off the stage and a woman from the audience came up to congratulate her, you know, tell her how much she enjoyed her, her keynote. And um, the woman was a senior leader with, I think, BMW and um, and just, you know, super, super high powered executive. And she said, she said to my friend, she said, did you go to an all girls school? And my friend said, well, yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Why do you ask? And she said, I can, oh, I can always tell by the way women comport themselves, whether or not they went to a, you know, a co-ed school or an all-girls school. And there's just something about women who have that all-girls school experience that's different. And I thought that was so interesting. I I think it's amazing. And I agree. Like I will be, it'll be, you know, I'll be talking or getting to know someone. And then I find out that they went to all-girls. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. I was, you know, completely expecting. But I think <laughs> You know, not everyone, like you said, has the luxury of um, doing that or, you know, so it's like, how does that get replicated in, you know, in today's world? You know, it's about, I think it's just about empowering and enabling. And, you know, I love doing, you know, so many talks too about, you know, when like, so they can see like, no, you can be this, like, you can be technical, you can be a CEO, you can, you know do all this our girls need to hear all those things they sure do especially our girls that are going into the tech industry because as you and i both know there are many instances where no matter how um you know how successful you've been sometimes you're still elbowing your way to the table and into rooms and that sort of thing so anything that we can do to to help our girls make that journey is something that i'm pretty passionate about i heard all right so it's a bit of an understatement to say that today's tech stacks are big. They're getting bigger. They're getting more unwieldy, more complex. Enterprise IT teams are managing these complex multi-cloud environments. They're juggling a ton of tools in the process. And they're often dealing with the reality of a, a lack of skilled talent and yet dealing with an ever-increasing workload. So this is the reality um, that they're navigating. And by necessity, IT teams have had to become more strategic about managing the tools and systems that connect them to business outcomes, things like revenue, customer experience, employee experience, and those sort of things. And, you know, what's exciting to me about these days in, you know, which we find ourselves, we're seeing this seismic shift in how businesses operate, and, and of course, the importance of data and teams need access to data and insights that not only keep their IT teams operational, but which also power the enterprise and, and which play an outsized role in their growth and profitability. So, you know, the rise of Gen AI has been and will continue to be a transformational moment in time for all of us. And But it also brings complications of its own. And that's, I think, why we're seeing an increasing demand for AI-powered hybrid observability across all types of businesses. And, and that, my dear, is why you're here today, because I know that what you and your team at Logic Monitor do, spend all your days thinking about working on and solving for some of these very issues right? Yes. I, we, we love this. I mean, I think 
you know, this has always been so important. Um, you know, obviously your your infrastructure fuels digital transformation, but now we're in this like seismic, you know, AI revolution. And what is powering that are data centers, right? Yeah. And um, that we're squarely in the epicenter of that is like ensuring that your the data centers are up and running and resilient so that companies can do their digital transformation initiatives and these massive AI initiatives that their company is betting on, yeah. not just to to catapult in the market, but literally to survive right now. Um, and so, you know, but then there's all the complications, which is like, okay, now we've got to build up more data centers. Um, there's even more you know, um, tools uh, that are that are coming. And like you said, it's like, oh, how can we do that more efficiently? And so we really, you know, first and foremost, we monitor this these data centers. We monitor them on premise. We monitor them in the cloud. We monitor that hybrid, which is just becoming more and more of a reality, um, especially with AI. And as companies are thinking through, like, how do we build this infrastructure in um, not only from a performance to to enable the innovation, but also in a cost effective and sustainable way. And so they're, mm-hmm. they're thinking through how do we do that? And so we also, because we have this data, we ensure that it's resilient and up and running, but we can also make recommendations around how they think through their data center strategy. And so mm-hmm. we're just, you know, loving the, the tailwinds and we've been very purpose built, built um, from, from our beginning to, to help support companies on this. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think that, you know, I wanted to touch on a little bit, you know, you you talked briefly about it, but I wanted to dive in a little bit to some of these industry trends. You know, I don't know anybody today that's not highly focused on AI and the capabilities that brings, but beyond and including AI, you know, this AI driven revolution is, is really reshaping our lives, our businesses, all of that sort of thing. So I'd love to hear from you. What trends are you watching most closely and what are you seeing ahead? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we really are seeing this, this, I mean, revolution's like an understatement, right? Yeah. Everybody you talk to says this is, this is as big or bigger than the internet. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's changed all of our, our lives. And so, um, you know, this is, this is huge. And so if we're, we're seeing it as like, all right, how do we power that innovation? Um, and that's really where there's a huge focus on, kind of the data center, but then how do we power that in a cost effective and sustainable way um, is really important. And then there's this, um, you know, reliance on the data. So, you know, it's like, okay, we need to power this innovation, but then we need the data and what is the quality of the data and um, how do we manage this data coming from all these different sources that are deeply interconnected now right. um, so that you can use it for your strategic advantage. And so um, we're, we're seeing so much of that. And, you know, again, like we're, we're fortunate that we're squarely in the middle of that in terms of what our products and services um, support. Yeah, and I do think that, you know, the challenge of a lack of highly skilled technical talent plays such a big role here because a lot of the solutions I know that you're developing and delivering and and what else we're seeing on the market is that, you know, solutions that can efficiently manage complex environments without requiring additional staff and solutions that, you know, provide deeper visibility into what's happening on-prem and in the cloud, across verticals, across regions, all those sorts of things. I mean, those are very real business needs that, you know, it's not a, it's not a, oh, nice to have sort of thing. It's like, we have to have this right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think um, so earlier in the week, I was at kind of a CEO conference and, you know, all the CEOs across every industry, you know, in size, it's like, it, you know, what is is the, the talent and the capacity that you need? And everyone's saying we cannot increase capacity, but we have to shift our skill and talent mix. And so, it's um it it's you know a high priority I think for every every single um, company out there regardless yeah. of the industry or size you're in yeah absolutely absolutely well and you know I I know that one of the realities that many organizations are navigating is that 
they want to be able to leverage more AI, but a lot of times they, you know, being able to access that IT ops talent can be a challenge. So lots of things going on, but this leads me to Edwin AI. And I know that you and your team developed Edwin AI to help bridge these gaps that we're talking about. So I'd love it if you would share a little bit more about Edwin AI and what your customers are finding attractive about that solution. Yeah. Um, so Edwin is like your um, super IT ops person, right? Edwin doesn't go on vacation. Edwin <laughs> doesn't get sick. Um, and Edwin can work 24 by seven. So this is like a really great teammate that you you want on your on your team. And so yeah. um, and I'll I'll digress because like we we the naming of Edwin was um was also, you know, we were really trying to kind of think what what captures, you know, what what Edwin can can do. Um and it, it was it was really off of the the Hubble telescope and like really yeah. being able to have this visibility. And so, you know, that's first and foremost for us is like you have to be able to see across this complicated environment and ever increasing complicated um and you know quantity environment is that visibility and so first and foremost we say we provide the single pane of glass that edwin can see everything um and then it's how do you um correlate all of that data so now you're getting tons of data from all these different sources um how do you actually take the context and correlate that into actionable insights. And so Edwin can do that. It can make sense of all of this, pull it in a unified view, and then can start to get much more predictive and provide recommendations. So saying, all right, here's how you make sense of it. Here's the predictive models. And then, oh, here's some recommendations across all this data that we're seeing. And then ultimately put that in plain text language. And so you start to think of, you know, these used to be IT ops folks who had to be deeply, deeply technical. And now someone who's, you know, a CIO or an executive could actually start to use Logic Monitor as well, because we're, we're able to, to put those predictions and recommendations in this natural language versus in, you know, technical jargon and, and code. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Well, I know that you've seen Edwin have some significant impacts on things like capacity and efficiency and productivity. And I know that, you know, during the Elevate event in Austin, um, you talking about, you know, you made a mention of alert exhaustion and how overwhelmed, I mean, it seems like a small thing, but it's not if you're getting thousands and thousands of alerts on a daily basis. And so, um, you know, I, I remember you talking a little bit about how alert exhaustion can so easily overwhelm many of today's IT teams, which are often leaner than they might like. And, you know, and I, and I know that customers can use Edwin to reduce things like ticket volume and, and that you've had some good success on that front. I'd love to hear if you have any data points on that. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We have so many data points. And I mean, I think noise i mean i think in this entire world beyond just it apps like noise is yeah. um is is like one of the biggest societal challenges right now mm -hmm. like so much is coming into our brains from all different sources and the same is true in um you know it ops and, and when you're monitoring and observing this data and so yeah. you know we are seeing just this tremendous demand we launched edwin in mid-june and i can't even tell you like people are getting this like emotional reaction because it is changing their lives. Right. And it, it <laughs> makes sense of it. And so we have a customer, you know, that immediately went live um, on this right after we, we launched it in, in mid June and they already are seeing um, going from, they had 12,500 events a day. So that, you know, think about that. Like they have to, you know, before <laughs> everyone had to sift through 12, almost 13,000 events every single day. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and we reduced that um, by 75% in ticket volume and 95% in the alerts. And so that's significant. So mm -hmm. they're now getting just the... Um, you know, what matters the most. And that ultimately, you know, resulted in, um, you know, a 20% improvement in their overall operational efficiency mm -hmm. and a 60% um, improvement in what we call MTTR, which is their mean time to resolution. Like how fast can you 
find where an issue is. And so this greater is greater than 50%. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's significant yeah. impact yeah. and that's allowing, and, and this is just the beginning, right? They've yeah. just only been using it for a few months and think about what that opens up. If you're yeah. not spending time, if Edwin's doing all this crap work for you, essentially, yeah. you can get to go be more strategic and it frees up all this time for you and time is so important um, mm-hmm. this day and age. Yeah. You know, we do talk a lot. I feel sometimes that those of us in the industry, we use um, we use some of the same terms over and over again, and some of them get a little old. But, you know, one of the things is that, you know, um, AI isn't going to take your job. Somebody knows how to use AI is going to take your job or, you know, people don't, uh, these solutions will free up people so that they can focus on, you know, higher value work. But the reality of it is that's not a platitude. That is 100% true. And if you're not slogging through 12,500 alerts on a daily basis, just think about what it opens up for you to do um, and to accomplish for the benefit of the organization and your customers. I mean, reducing that load is hugely significant. Oh, I mean, it's, I, I, you know, I don't want to be like overly dramatic, but it's true. Like our customers' lives are changing and they have a very emotional reaction to us. Um, And, you know, everyone, you know, I I talk to people about that. I'm like the emotional reaction because we're changing their careers. And we just had a customer advisory board um, recently and, the customers talk about that. They're like, I went from an order taker to a strategic member in the boardroom. Yeah. Like, think about that. Like, you literally go from like you're in like a back office just slogging through all this stuff and you're just reacting and yep. you've got your business stakeholders just coming at you like, when are you going to fix this? What are you doing? What are you? And you're just sifting through it, looking for that needle in the haystack. <laughs> And now you immediately are like, oh, I, I solved the issue before it came an issue. There's no issues. Um, or if there is an issue, I can immediately find it. Mm-hmm. And now they get to focus on the business outcomes and they they get to talk about the strategic, you know, outcomes that the company's trying to do. And they're 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 connecting those dots and talking about it. And so they're and now they're like going into the boardroom instead of being in this back, you know, office shop. Sure. You know, I, I too have heard many of those stories, Christina, and it is so rewarding. It really is. And I, and I've, you know, worked on digital transformation initiatives alongside my clients before the term digital transformation was even coined, actually. So I've been doing this a long time. And, you know, I remember one time having some conversations at an industry event um, for a client who was focused in the RPA, BPO space. And, you know, this was the early days of the low code, no code, and, you know, democratizing this and all that sort of thing. And I had several conversations with some relatively junior level and employees within the organization who were talking about some of the things that they had learned and some of the ways that they were being able to use these low code, no code solutions. And, and in some ways developing expertise such that they were actually being able to shift into roles where they could teach other people within the organization how to do this. And just like, just some of the stories and the, and the light in their eyes and the happiness in their faces, res- it's something I never forget just because you are changing lives and yeah. careers and career trajectory and and really allowing people to shift into some some infinitely more meaningful and more rewarding work. And and I think that's I like going to bed at the end of a day, putting my head on the pillow and thinking about that and feeling like, you know, we're we're, we're making change and that's pretty cool. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Yeah. And I, I, it is so rewarding and like back to like, you know, when we opened the, the conversation and talking a lot about, you know, women in, um, in, you know, IT and in tech. And it's like, it's not just women, but it's like, anyway, like it, it's just, it can be intimidating for folks, right. especially right. infrastructure, you know, IT ops. And so if we all of a sudden can kind of democratize, you know, not to overuse that word, but like, can we like demystify, democratize and make yeah. it a connecting the dots to the business, like it opens up so many more career opportunities. For yeah. Us. Yeah. And I think today that's actually really important. Um, probably 
almost more so than ever before as you kind of step back and think about how AI will eventually is reshaping and will reshape the workforce landscape and all of that sort of thing. So being able to, you know, shift into different roles and, and different responsibilities, I think is, is important, an important part of the equation. I know that you've had a couple of other kind of cool client success stories. I'd love for you to share them with me. Let's start with, let's start with the athletic one. Yeah. Top golf. <laughs> well, I love top golf because I actually love top golf. Like yeah. um, I actually first came about it when we go home for Thanksgiving to Kansas city. And there was one night right there in Overland park and yeah. uh, my, my kids became attached and um, it is, it, it's, it's very fun, but um, really like beyond just me, me loving top golf, um, the, the, how they use us, I think really brings to life what we were just talking about in this mm-hmm shift of, you know, how, how you connect these, these dots between your IT infrastructure and your business needs. So Topgolf has a hundred and expanding venues worldwide. They're actually opening one in Burlingame, which is about 30, 45 minutes from my house. So I can't wait. Um, and, um, you know, they looked at, at, you know, kind of their network monitoring and, and said, you know, these, these tools, um, first of all, we, we have too many of them. So we, we need to consolidate and, and have something that can bring, you know, visibility across, um, our entire infrastructure. And then two, they said, you know what, but not only do we just care about, you know, our corporate, um, infrastructure, but also, you know, the point of sale system, like when you're buying your nachos and beer or when, you know, you have the ball that's, you know, tracing and, and connecting those dots. And so we can monitor anything with an IP address. So we can monitor this corporate infrastructure, but we can also connect it, connect it to the critical business technology, you know, like those point of sales, like the, the golf balls, like the full bays where you're, mm-hmm. you're playing. And so one of the core metrics that Top Golf um, uses is called a player experience score, and it's a kind of an algorithm they have that combines revenue, customer loyalty, uh, wait times, you know, all of that, and that's their their core, you know, how they measure everything at Top Golf, you know, in the boardroom, you know, at the at the top executive level, and so now we said, all right, Logic Monitor can come in and we can monitor all this and bring it in a single pane of glass. And we can um, connect those dots to where you're keeping your systems up and running and what that does to the player experience score, how that impacts it. Right. So every top golf location has a logic monitor dashboard, you know, their GMs, if you will, um, in each top golf has a logic monitor dashboard that shows the availability of the bays and the point solutions and they can see that and they can see what that does to their core metric and so now you know the um our our sponsor there he you know he's a great example of like now he's connecting the dots between the work he's doing and the impact it's having on their core business metric and so that's really um exciting and and i love um, that that story from from so many levels. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and really just that, you know, being able to consolidate 10 or more different monitoring tools into one integrated platform. Okay, well, that's music to my ears. And, you know, and I think the more that we can integrate proactive monitoring solution into our operations, right? I mean, this is all about, you know, sort of not only reducing the load on IT, but it's all about serving up those better experiences. And, so I know that I remember a story from Elevate where you also talked about, so we've got, you know, the top golf example, we've got the other example of the company that was inundated by alerts. And I know that you work with some restaurants and fast food industry. So talk with me a little bit about what kind of solutions you've been able to deliver for them. Well, what is cool to uh, say about Logic Runner is that we span like every size company and every yeah. company. So like we can save lives with the healthcare <laughs> medical, and then we can go have some fun with Top Golf. Uh-huh. And when we're hungry, we can help make <laughs> sure that you can get your favorite food or milkshake, you know, that's so important, um, so important to you. So we have a very highly recognizable food chain and, and sometimes their milk, uh, shake machines have been known to be down, but well, gosh, I can't even guess who that might be. Anyway, go on. 
but don't worry. Logic Monitor is going to save the day. Um, <laughs> so we're going to change, revolutionize the world by, by bringing milkshakes to everyone. Um, but in all seriousness, you know, they've got over 14,000 restaurants across 175 global markets. And yep. they had, um, you know, almost a four hour outage on one of their, their, you know, legacy tools. And it cost them over $10 million in those just few hours. And it was a very real tangible cost. Uh-huh. And so they said, you know what, like we have to be able to um, get this visibility and we have to monitor it because, yeah. you know, it is not only costing us money, but it's having a real, um, you know, customer loyalty and experience. Absolutely. Issue. Like when you, I mean, in- you don't want them to quit coming to you for milkshakes. Exactly. It's <laughs> And like everyone I talked to is like, God, I want a milkshake. You know, it's like it's like part of their brand now. Is people are like, stuff's down. I can't order, right? And so you don't you don't want that. Um, and so you know they were able to to literally get their resolution time from hours into minutes, like a minute with um, you know, with you utilizing Logic Monitor. And now they're we're we're going out into their actual restaurants too just like Top Golf to connect not only this corporate kind of how you think of infrastructure, hybrid infrastructure, but connect to the actual devices that are in their restaurants, like their air fryers and their milkshake machines. And so this is, this is, um, you know, a really, you know, fun and exciting story and, and just immediate impact um, we're, we're having on their business. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, I know, you know, as you said, there's so many use cases here. And, you know, again, some of this was, you know, part of the fire hose of information that I was able to get while I was at your Elevate conference. So it was just an amazing event. But, you know, you, you touched on things like, you know, connecting guest experiences for hotel chains or monitoring hospital systems equipment to make sure it's continuously running. I mean, you know, we don't think about, we don't often think about the things that we do and the things that we need, we just expect them to work. You know, I I, I um, was thinking about this as I was as I was prepping for this conversation. And I, a lot of this I feel about how I feel about my car. I don't care what makes it, how the engine works. I don't care how it was made. I just want to get in and go, and I want to know that I can count on it, and I want to, you know, to always start, to always work, to always do exactly what it's supposed to do, and to keep me safe, right? I mean, today, you know, with today's connected cars, right, you know, kind of alert systems and all that sort of thing, and and while that's a broad example, um, you know, for me, this is really all about experiences, and this is, you know, tech solutions can serve up better experiences. So Logic Monitor, when you're serving up better experiences for your customers, that allows them to serve up better experiences and, and never-ending milkshakes whenever you want them for <laughs> your clients, you know, all of that is what this is all about. And it all of that leads to growth and revenue and profitability and great CSAT scores and loyal customers and repeat business and referrals. All those things are at play here. And it all is about experiences. And so that's kind of what I love about what we get to do here because serving up better experiences and sometimes when people don't even realize that we're serving up better experiences, right? Just We just make things amazing. I think that's a pretty cool way to spend our days. It is, you know, I think sometimes people that don't know what I do, like, oh, infrastructure sounds sort of boring and like, super I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm getting you your milkshake. I'm saving your life, um, yes. you know, with some of our healthcare systems. And this is why right. I sit here and talk to you all day, because right. I think it's just, it's so impactful in every single person's everyday lives, right? Yes. And you just don't notice and realize it. And that means we're being successful if you don't notice it in real life. I- Right. I agree. I agree. So let's talk a little bit about Logic Monitor. I know that you and the team are working like crazy, you know, and, and one of the realities of our world today is, and, and this is, I, I'll step back and say, I've always been grateful. You know, I, I believe that you get what you get when it comes to your personality and how you deal with change and, and so many things. And I've always been, I love change. I work very well in a state of chaos and, you know, I didn't ask for those things. That's just how I'm wired. So I've always been grateful about that. But I know that, you know, today's reality is that 
Customers are more demanding than ever before. Their needs are changing rapidly. Technology is changing rapidly. And I know that Logic Modern has grown like crazy since you joined as CEO. So I'd love for you to talk with me a little bit, if you would, about some of the growth areas for the company that you're seeing, what you're doing to meet your customers where they are beyond what we might have already talked about and, and how you are serving those needs in terms of, you know, the especially as it relates to sort of our need to rapidly iterate. Yeah. No, I mean, I've been so fortunate, um, you know, that thousands and thousands of customers are, are trusting Logic Monitor. And I think, you know, that's because we are so mission critical to their businesses. Um, but also, you know, we're we're really innovative and we care about our customers and we innovate with them. And so that shows up in our in our numbers. And mm -hmm. You know, we're, um, you know, um, you know, been growing our bookings um, over 55 percent, um, you know, this year, which is which is pretty great, especially in, in this macro environment. Pretty great. Um, yeah, we're, um, you know, we're monitoring over a trillion metrics per day. And I think that number is like even up since um, I, I last got got the, the data. So we're just, you know, monitoring just a tremendous amount of of. Um, metrics and data and over yeah. 4 million devices. And so, yeah. you know, our coverage. And so we've got this incredible footprint um, adoption with our customers. We're mission critical for them. And we've got this enterprise scale that we can support these very exciting um, and impactful companies that are in most, you know, uh, most people's lives. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that's, it's, it's really great for us. And and we're doing that, you know, operational efficiency is important for us um, with our, with our, our customers, but also for us too. So, you know, we're doing that very much in a profitable way, um, which is great. And, you know, global, we've got a hundred thousand, you know, users across 30 countries um, and we're continuing to move up market in the enterprise. We can service the small dental office or the global, um, you know, uh, you know, food, food yeah. industry. Um, but we, we are because, you know, complexity comes with the enterprise. And because we have the platform scalability, um, we are seeing a huge shift with, um, you know, our customer base, you know, coming from the enterprise and, and actually, you know, continuing to, to even spend more with us. So, right. yeah, it's pretty exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> yeah. So talk with me a little bit about what's happening on the observability tech front and what you see happening with your customer base there. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, as I mentioned, like this is this is in a revolution right now in the tech industry, and so um, you know, not only digital transformation is mission critical, but all these AI initiatives, and yeah. so the the requirements for the resiliency um, of of the environments, the infrastructure environment, is just at an all time high. It is a must have, not a nice to have. It is mission critical, and yeah. so the more we can continue to um, you know, bring in the visibility on that data and that we can actually, um, you know, help leverage this full potential of all this data you have to turn that into, you know, actionable insights, both from predicting where there might be some challenges, but also being able to be a partner with them um, and make recommendations, talk about, hey, how does um, how does your environment you think about moving across, um, you know, your your infrastructure? What is makes most sense from not just a performance enablement, but a cost? Or, you know, how is this impacting the environment and, and the sustainability requirements we have? And so um, we're able to do that. And, and we're so focused um, on innovating with our customers and being agile and, you know, really doing this together. And so um, it's it's such an exciting time. I feel so grateful for, for being in um, tech right now and really being at a company like Logic Monitor where we're squarely in the, in the center of this, this revolution. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I know that on the innovation front, you are not laggards in any way at Logic Monitor. I know you've made some pretty impressive inroads there. Um, you know, you talked about some of those strides in platform innovation at Elevate. You know, I know you used to be a single product company. Now that's changed. Talk with me a little bit about that, Christina. 
Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it's so important that, you know, we talk about journeys with our customers mm-hmm. and, you know, that they're evolving right? Like, and just change. You, you, you talk about how like change is core to like who yeah. you are. It's got to be core to everyone right now yeah. because um, there's just so much change. There's change in the world around us. There's change in the macro environment. Sure. Um, the companies themselves are changing. Um, we at Logic Monitor are changing. And so we have to be able to support all that change with our customers. And they have to know that when they enter a partnership with us, that that's exactly what it is, that we're going there with them. And so for us, that's to kind of innovate ahead of them. And so even if you think about, you know, we're able to consume and see all this data and then provide these actionable insights, like over time, our customers are saying, hey, we're starting to get comfortable with that. We actually want you to even automate some of that. And so we're we're building that into our platform where maybe customers aren't quite yet ready to use it, but we're building that for the future. And so, you know, we've continued to expand our innovation and in, in coverage, meaning what what can we see and monitor across a company's um, stack, as well as um, being able to be smarter and using the machine learning and the stochastic models to be more predictive. Mm-hmm. And then now adding the AI or the generative AI to, to democratize that into summarizations and plain text language and to start to make recommendations actually across um, these data sets so we can see everything. We can see like here are um, the workloads that are best served in the cloud. These are the workloads that are best served on premise. Or we even, you know, saw the CrowdStrike outage before anyone else because all of a sudden, you know, my CTO calls me. He's like, it's, it's going on. But like all of our customers are having an influx of alerts that we've never seen before. And so yeah. we're like, there must be something that's happening, you, you know, across right. the board. And so we have all of this, this insight. And, and now we can use these technologies to, to innovate. And our customers are loving that. And it, it's showing up. Um, in the value that they're getting from Logic Monitor. And it's showing up for us also in the the number of products and tools that they're they're adopting and and purchasing. Great response, Christina. Great response. Well, that is a wrap for our show. Christina Kosmowski, Logic Monitor CEO, brilliant leader, fellow Kansas City girl and change maker. Thank you so much for joining me today. I knew this conversation was going to be a great one. And you, of course, did not disappoint. (laughs) For our viewing and listening audience, I'm your host, Shelly Kramer, principal analyst here at The Cube Research. Thank you for tuning into The Cube, which is your source for enterprise and emerging tech news. And we will see you here next time. (music) 